Hello there, I'm Bren. And I'm Rad. And we're astronomers at the Royal Observatory Greenwich. We'll be taking you on a tour of the night sky and showing you what to look for in the month of September. We're going to be using a very special program, a virtual planetarium called Stellarium. And there's lots to see with just your eyes, but it might be worth taking a camera with you and snapping whatever you see. We'd love to see your photos of the night sky. And you can tweet them to us. Our Twitter handle is at ROG Astronomers. We have a few observing tips before we start. The best time to see objects is when they're at their highest point in the sky. This is because the light travels through less atmosphere and suffers less distortion. Now, unless you're looking at the moon, you must allow your eyes to adapt to the darkness. You can use a red torch if you need light. And also very important, once you're outside looking at the stars, you might get hooked like us. So make sure you're dressed warmly for your stargazing session. And that way you can enjoy it a lot more. OK, so at the start of September, the sun sets at 7.45 in the evening. So we'll set the sky to 9 o'clock when it will be really dark. And the first thing you should do is find north. Now you can do this by looking for the plough. Uh, this looks like a little bit like a saucepan. It's very easy to find, even from light polluted London. And the plough points to a star called Polaris. It's also part of a constellation called Ursa Major. However, the rest of the constellation is too faint to see from the city. Now, once you've found Polaris, look directly down to the horizon and you'll be facing north. And once you've found the plough, you should then look for Cassiopeia, an M or W shape made up of five stars. OK, so now you're facing north. Actually, you should turn around and face the opposite direction, south, because there are lots of interesting objects to look at in this part of the sky. At the start of the month and just after sunset, you will see lots of objects close together in the southwest. If you look towards the waxing crescent moon in the constellation of Libra, you will also see Mars and Saturn very low in the sky. Mars appears a pinkish orange colour and is often referred to as the red planet due to the high levels of iron oxide in the rock. And now take a look at Saturn through your binoculars and you'll see two bits protruding either side of the planet. And these are its famous rings. You may find that both planets appear to wobble through binoculars or a telescope and that's because they are very, very low in the sky and the light is passing through a thicker layer of atmosphere. So you've got to catch them at the start of the month before they disappear with the sun at sunset. Mars and Saturn were the celebrities of the night sky last month and you can hear more about them in our August Look Up podcast. Now take a look for the bright red supergiant Antares, the rival to Mars, in the constellation Scorpius, referred to as the heart of the scorpion. Antares is only 12 million years old, whereas our sun is 4,500 million years old. Antares will set below the horizon earlier on successive days, so again, catch this while you can near the start of September. Another thing to look for in the first half of the month is the constellation Sagittarius, close to the horizon in the south. It looks a little bit like a teapot in the sky, and because of its low position, it can also be seen from the southern hemisphere. If you're in the countryside far away from city lights, you will see it lies over the Milky Way, the fuzzy band that arches across the sky. In fact, Sagittarius marks the heart of our galaxy, and the nucleus can be found in a region called Sagittarius A. Here there is a lot of gas and dust. Right in the middle are lots of orbiting stars under the gravitational influence of an invisible object, a supermassive black hole. This black hole is the result of the merger of many smaller black holes and is four million times heavier than the sun. Thankfully, we're nowhere near it. So light from our sun takes 26,000 years to reach the black hole, but the size of the black hole itself is only a light hour across. Looking further up along the Milky Way, you will see the Summer Triangle high in the southwest. The three stars that make up the triangle all belong to three different constellations. Deneb lives in Cygnus the Swan, which flies over the Milky Way, and this star is the furthest of the three at 3,000 light years. Vega is part of Lyra the Harp, and it's the brightest of the three, only 25 light years away. 
It was the North Star around 14,000 years ago, and it will be again in the year 13,727, due to the precession of the Earth's axis. Now this means that the axis of the Earth wobbles, taking 26,000 years to make one complete circle. And then we have Altair at the bottom, which is part of Aquila the Eagle, only 17 light years away. And Altair spins at an incredible rate, taking only nine hours to spin once, whereas the Sun takes around 25 days to rotate once on its axis. Now, if you look within Cygnus, you should definitely look for the double star Alberio or Beta Cygni. With the naked eye, it looks like a single star. But with a telescope, you can see two stars close to each other. These stars do not orbit each other. They just appear close to each other in the sky. But the brighter yellow star is actually a binary system. But unfortunately, you can't see its companion because it's just far too close to it. And south of Cygnus in the east is the great square of Pegasus. And Pegasus leads to our nearest big galaxy, Andromeda, a beautiful spiral star city, one and a half times bigger than the Milky Way. It looks like an elongated white smudge in the sky, but if you look closely, you may spot a central bright region. And this is the nucleus of the galaxy, which contains a high concentration of old stars. But around the spiral arms are lots of younger stars, and the, the arms are essentially the star factories of the galaxy. Now, the best way to look at Andromeda is with averted vision. This means don't look straight at it, just to the side of it, and you'll be using the very light sensitive rod cells in the retina of your eyes. And we use this technique regularly when we look at Andromeda or other faint galaxies through the Great Equatorial Telescope here at the observatory. Towards the end of the month, look for Taurus with its brightest star, Aldebaran. This is a dying star. It will lose its gas slowly, eventually becoming a compact star called a white dwarf. This is how our sun will die. Aldebaran is the bloodshot eye of Taurus, the bull. You might recognize Taurus. It's one of the star signs. If you're an early riser, look out for an incredibly bright Venus in the dawn sky, low in the east. It will approach the rising sun towards the end of the month, making it a challenge to see. And Jupiter will be visible to the upper right of Venus. Find it at least an hour before sunrise, after which it will be washed out by the sun's light. The 23rd of September signifies the tipping point between the summer and winter. It's called the autumnal equinox. And on this day, the sunrise and sunset times will almost be 12 hours apart. This is because the Earth is neither tilted towards or away from the sun. After this, the period of daylight for us in the UK will continue to get shorter and our nights will become longer. But in the southern hemisphere, daytime will start to increase. So, it will gradually get cooler, but an early sunset means more time for stargazing. So wrap up warm, get out there and look up.